Which great American invention comes from your state? Each state, with its uniqueness, has contributed to the fabric of inventions that have revolutionized not only America, but also the entire world. From highly practical innovations to revolutionary medical procedures, we've rounded up the most impressive inventions to come out of each state. As dramatic as it might initially sound, they truly have shaped the world as we know it. Let's start our journey in Alabama. Inspired by his friendship with a man who had become deaf and mute after a childhood case of scarlet fever, Miller Reese Hutchinson spent four years at Alabama Medical College, researching and trying time and time again to develop the first portable hearing aid. He eventually succeeded in 1898, terming his invention the Acuphone, which, most importantly, gave his friend the chance to hear again. The Acuphone was so large that it had to be placed on a table, but now hearing aids are very portable and can be used anywhere. Moving north to Alaska, we find the birthplace of the kayak. Initially developed by indigenous Alaskans for survival, these slim, efficient vessels were crucial for hunting in the harsh Arctic waters. Crafted from materials like seal skin and driftwood, their design was a masterstroke of functionality, allowing for smooth navigation and maneuverability. The kayak's evolution from a vital hunting tool to a popular recreational craft mirrors the changing human relationship with nature. Today, made from modern materials like plastic and fiberglass, kayaks are beloved worldwide for outdoor adventures. When he wasn't working on sending astronauts to the moon, NASA nuclear physicist Jack Cover developed the first taser, which he patented in 1974. Cover derived the name for the taser from his childhood fascination with Tom Swift adventure stories, terming his invention the Thomas Swift Electric Rifle, or Taser for short. Years later, entrepreneurs contacted Cover about developing the taser as a non-lethal self-protection device for civilians, thereby birthing Taser International, which is based in Scottsdale, Arizona. The Bowie Knife popularized in the 1830s and named after Jim Bowie of the Sandbar Duel, was initially a personal defense tool and a gentleman's accessory. Distinguished by its quality finish, the Bowie knife varied in design, often featuring decorative elements. Jim Bowie's brother Resin played a key role in promoting the knife's association with their family name. The term Bowie knife became widespread in the 1830s, referring to large knives with distinctive features. James Black, an Arkansas cutler, is credited with refining the design, leading to the Bowie knife's iconic status in American history. Finally, we arrive in sunny California, the birthplace of the tech giant Google. In the mid-90s, two Stanford University graduate students named Larry Page and Sergey Brin debuted their world-class internet search engine that has now come to be known as Google today a near-universal term. But get this, the first iteration of Pages and Brin's search engine was named Backrub. It's um, probably for the best, the two decided to go with a different name for their final product. Let's now set course for Colorado, where a culinary invention has left us with a classic American delicacy. Here, in the bustling city of Denver, the cheeseburger was born, a testament to the state's inventive spirit and culinary creativity. The story of the cheeseburger is entwined with the tale of Lewis Ballast, the determined proprietor of the Humpty Dumpty Barrel Drive-In. Ballast, in his pursuit of a unique offering for his customers, decided to place a slice of cheese atop a sizzling hamburger. While this idea might seem simple today, it was revolutionary at the time. Ballast's determination to enhance the traditional hamburger led to an invention that is now a staple of American cuisine. Connecticut actually has a few important inventions in its history, including the portable typewriter, the Colt .45 revolver, and the Frisbee. But Waterbury native Ezra J. Warner's 1858 invention of the can opener, which he sold to the U.S. Army during the Civil War, has to take the cake. If it weren't for Warner, you'd still be opening cans the old-fashioned way, with a hammer and chisel. Kevlar, otherwise known as the material in bulletproof vests, was created by chemist Stephanie Kwolek in 1965. She actually originally intended for the material to be used as a lightweight, yet strong fiber in automobile tires, but quickly realized that it could have other life-saving applications. With the coastal humidity Floridians love to hate, 
The fact that this state was the first to come up with an air conditioning system isn't surprising. A doctor by the name of John Gorey first came up with the idea in 1841 when he imported massive amounts of ice from northern lakes down to Florida to cool his patients' sick rooms. He would go on to experiment with the expansion of gases to further refine the process of air conditioning. The cotton gin, you know the machine that revolutionized cotton production and manufacturing as the world knew it, accelerating the pace at which it was possible to separate cotton seeds from cotton fiber. A guy by the name of Eli Whitney patented the cotton gin while working on a Georgian plantation in 1794. It makes sense, right? The Aloha state has been perfecting the craft of surfing the waves for hundreds of years. Ancient Hawaiians viewed the practice of finding their balance on the board as a sort of unique spiritual ritual, an opportunity to respectfully commune with the immense power of the ocean. Leaving the sandy beaches of Hawaii, let's now venture into Idaho, where an invention that revolutionized communication and entertainment was born, the television. Philo Taylor Farnsworth was a teenager working on his family farm in Idaho when he had a vision for an invention. Other inventors working on televisions were toying with a mechanical-powered device, but he thought electricity would be a better choice. He later moved to Utah, then California, before his idea came to life. But Rigby, Idaho, still deems itself the birthplace of television. Moving on from Idaho's television, let's journey into Illinois, where another groundbreaking invention was born, the cell phone. Motorola innovator Martin Cooper invented the first working cell phone in Schaumburg, Illinois, in 1973. The 10-inch 2.5-pound device was nicknamed the brick at that point and wouldn't hit the shelves for another 10 years. As we move forward from Illinois, let's explore Indiana, where an invention that makes our daily lives easier was born, the washing machine. Doing your laundry sucks, but it sucks a whole lot less than it did back in the day thanks to William Blackstone. Mr. Blackstone decided to build a birthday present for his wife in 1874 to make it a little easier for her to clean their clothing. He built a machine that would remove dirt and wash clothing. This was the first washing machine designed to be used in a home. As we journey from Indiana, let's head to the heartland of America, to the state of Iowa. In 1890, an Iowan farmer named John Froelich got fed up with dragging his steam-powered thresher through the fields. He had the idea to attach a gas engine to the thresher's running gear and was amazed at how well it worked. And so, the tractor company that would later become John Deere was born. Omar Nedlik of Coffeyville, Kansas, didn't have a soda fountain in the Dairy Queen he owned. According to some accounts, his was broken. So he put bottles of soda in the freezer to keep them cold. When he served customers half-frozen sodas, they couldn't get enough. In 1958, he invented a new kind of soda machine, a cross between an automobile air conditioning unit and an ice cream machine, and called the slushy sodas, ICs. 7-Eleven began installing the machines in their stores in 1965. While the writer of the lyrics, You Sing Over Cake, has been lost in time, its tune came from Louisville sisters Mildred and Patty Hill, which they used in their 1893 song, Good Morning to All. Our journey takes us south to the vibrant heart of Louisiana, where a groundbreaking invention came to life, the binocular microscope. As part of his research on yellow fever transmission, Tulane chemistry professor John Riddell developed the binocular microscope, the first microscope to allow researchers to peer down at the slide using both eyes, in 1852. In 1834, the long-held aquatic dream of the human race, by which we mean the ability to spend more than a handful of minutes at a time underwater without having to come to the surface to gasp for lungfuls breath, was made a reality with Leonard Norcross's successful invention of the first fully enclosed diving suit. The suit was crafted from a rubber material and included a helmet that was connected via hoses to an above-water air supply. A phenomenally groundbreaking stride in the realm of medicine was taken right on the campus of the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, in 2001. The findings of the first mapping project of the human genome were published. In simple terms, these findings lend a massive amount of insight into the extreme complexities of human DNA. The human genome contains a staggering 3 billion base pairs, 
allowing geneticists to better understand the makeup of our chromosomes and better grasp the implications of genetically transmitted diseases. London-born MIT professor Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web in 1990. While he started outlining the idea as a software engineer in Switzerland, he moved to Massachusetts in 1994 to found the World Wide Web Consortium. Henry Ford's classic automobile, produced in massive quantities in assembly line factories in Detroit and Highland Park, Michigan, became the first vehicle that was accessible to the everyday working-class American. Ford's very first Model T cruised out of the factory in 1908. Both types of tape come from the same inventor. Richard Drew, an engineer for Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, later 3M. To help auto body shop workers create clean paint lines on cars, he developed a masking tape in 1925, then branded Scotch masking tape. Five years later, he'd create a waterproof, almost invisible tape. It was targeted at grocers' food wrappers, but it appealed to Depression-era consumers looking to fix rather than replace old goods. In what was then a revolutionary medical procedure, Dr. James D. Hardy performed the very first human lung transplant at University Hospital in Jackson, Mississippi in 1963, removing the lung from a patient who had just died from a heart attack and transplanting it into a man whose own lung had been compromised by bronchial carcinoma. According to the National Center for Biotechnology Information, though the transplant patient lived for only 18 days following the procedure, an autopsy found that he did not die of causes related to the transplant. There were no signs that his body had rejected the lung. Moving north from Mississippi, let's delve into the sweet side of inventions in the Show Me State, Missouri. As state law would have it, the first ever ice cream cone was invented amid the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, when an exasperated, overworked ice cream vendor ran out of cups and asked his neighboring waffle vendor to roll up some of his waffles so he could perch the scoops of ice cream on top of them. In his hometown of Helena, Montana, biophysicist Norman Jeffries Holter founded the Holter Research Foundation. In 1947, he invented a wearable Holter heart monitor, allowing doctors to watch patients as they went about their normal activities and not just stuck in hospital beds. Holter's first device weighed an astonishing 85 pounds, but he still played a crucial role in paving the way toward the invention of today's much more conveniently sized heart monitor. Railway engineer James Curran had previously invented a wire-based system for transporting bales of bananas to various locations across a loading dock. So when the owner of America's first ski resort requested a comfortable system for moving his guests to the tops of the mountains, Curran took the basic principles from his banana system and ran with the idea, developing what would come to be known as the ski lift in 1936. In 1873, Levi Strauss revealed an article of clothing that would come to be a staple item in everyone's closet for the century and counting to come, the blue jean. Back then, the most monumental part of the jean was not its style, but its practicality. Levi Strauss patented the idea of using rivets at the points of strain in men's work pants, which allowed the clothing to more durably withstand the wearer's grueling working hours. Dean came and founded Deca Research and Development Corp. in Manchester, New Hampshire. Came and invented the iBot, a stair climbing wheelchair, and redeveloped that medical product as the segue to attract a wider consumer base. It went on the market in 2001. Let's now venture into the historic state of New Jersey, where an invention that truly illuminated the world was born the light bulb. Our story begins with Thomas Alva Edison, an inventor known for his relentless determination and innovative spirit. Edison envisioned a world where artificial light could illuminate homes, streets and factories, transforming the way people lived and worked. That's right, the Garden State gave us the power to harness electricity to control light. According to Life Science, Thomas Edison's laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey, experimented with over 3,000 different designs for bulbs between 1878 and 1880 before finally alighting on the design that worked. As we journey from the bright lights of New Jersey, our next stop takes us to the arid landscapes of New Mexico, where an invention of immense power was born, the atomic bomb. 
in a covert $2 billion operation that would later come to be known as the Manhattan Project. The world's most brilliant physicists and chemists undertook the creation of the world's first atomic bomb in Alamogordo, New Mexico. The bomb was successfully detonated in the barren deserts of New Mexico in July 1945, releasing a blast with the equivalent power of 15,000 to 20,000 tons of TNT. The concept of magnetic resonance imaging, or as most of us know it, the MRI, was developed by Dr. Raymond Damadian in New York in the 1970s. Damadian was able to use the imaging system to successfully identify cancerous tissues, and after receiving a patent for his apparatus and method for detecting cancer in tissue, he went on to build the first full-body MRI scanning system in 1977, which he proudly called the Indomitable. Stepping away from the bustling streets of New York, we find ourselves in the serene landscapes of North Carolina, a state that's been a cradle for one of the most significant inventions in human history, the first flight. The Wright brothers developed their flying machines in Ohio and North Carolina, but it wasn't until that fateful flight at Kitty Hawk in 1903 that they officially opened the era of aviation with a power-driven, heavier-than-air machine. The flight lasted 12 seconds and covered 120 feet. David Henderson Houston was meant to farm the North Dakota Plains, but he also had a penchant for tinkering. In 1881, Houston filed a patent for his most recent invention, a camera containing a roll of film. Houston's camera would go on to become today's iconic Kodak camera. Garrett Morgan, the son of a former slave, came up with a laundry list of innovations while living in Cleveland, Ohio, including a hair-straightening product and the predecessor for the gas mask. His best-known contribution, though, was an improved automatic electric traffic light, which stopped traffic from all directions briefly so drivers would have time to stop before the oncoming traffic was given the green light. As we continue our tour through the inventive states of America, we now find ourselves in the heartland of Oklahoma. Though we wouldn't think parking would be too much of an issue in this Midwestern state, it was the first to successfully implement the concept of the parking meter. The state installed the first coin-regulated meter in Oklahoma City in 1935. As our inventive journey continues, we now find ourselves in the picturesque state of Oregon, home to lush forests and stunning coastlines. If you're listening to this on a computer, you'll want to thank Douglas Engelbart for helping you navigate to this video. He developed the first mouse prototype in the 60s as part of a larger project aimed at augmenting human intellect with machines. Now we journey to the historic state of Pennsylvania. The very first computer was anything but personal, the mammoth of a machine constructed at the University of Pennsylvania during the World War II era to perform ballistics calculations for the U.S. military, weighed 30 tons and required almost 2,000 square feet of floor space. Despite Rhode Island's location right next to the swells and crests of Atlantic Ocean waves, the residents in Little Rhodey, like all other places, are still susceptible to the threat of fire, as evidenced by Frederick Grinnell's 1872 invention of the handy automatic sprinkler system, which detects smoke and rings and rings and rings and rings. Let's dive deep into South Carolina, where a groundbreaking invention was born. During the Civil War, Confederate Marine engineer Horace Lawson Hunley developed a groundbreaking early submarine, which was used to attack and sink a ship on Union blockade duty shortly before sinking itself, killing the entire crew including Hunley himself. The Hunley, a hand-powered vessel, was a marvel of its time. It demonstrated that submarines could be useful in war, opening the door to the development of modern underwater combat vessels. However, the Hunley also highlighted the dangers of undersea warfare. The submarine has not only transformed the face of warfare, but also opened up a new world for exploration. Let's journey to South Dakota. If you've never heard the cyclotron brought up in casual conversation, fear not because we haven't either. Apparently, a South Dakotan invented this apparatus that functions as a particle accelerator in 1932, providing a major help in the field of nuclear physics experimentation. One of his subsequent more powerful cyclotrons was used to discover plutonium, neptunium, and other elements, and they've also been used in particle therapy to treat cancer. 
The first tow truck was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, when Ernest Holmes Sr. devised a contraption of a pulley, three poles, and a chain in order to transport his friend's Cadillac. Today, you can't traverse any of our nation's highways without catching a glimpse of the slightly more sophisticated update of Holmes's original invention. Let us now venture into the vast landscapes of Texas. The original electric calculators were expensive, weighing about 50 pounds and requiring an outlet. Texas Instruments wasn't trying to solve that though, when developers led by Jack Kilby created a small handheld calculator. Instead, the main goal of the 1967 device was to show off and sell more of the company's integrated microchips. Several inventors, including Paul Winchell, who also voiced Tigger of Winnie the Pooh, had created artificial hearts before, but early versions were temporary, some only lasting a few days. In 1982 though, Robert Jarvik, Maryland, of the University of Utah, invented the Jarvik 7 artificial heart as a permanent solution. Let's now venture to the snow-laden landscapes of Vermont. Actually, Vermont was the country's first local government to even establish a coin-producing mint. But the Green Mountain State was also the first to roll out copper coins in 1785, setting the precedent for today's US pennies featuring Honest Abe. We now set the course for the historical state of Virginia. Harvesting entire fields of wheat by hand before Cyrus McCormick developed the Mechanical Reaper in 1831 must have been one nasty gig. Thankfully, his machine made farmers' jobs slightly less arduous and allowed for more efficient output and distribution of crops. As we continue our journey, we venture into the picturesque landscapes of Washington State. The Boeing factory in Everett, Washington, debuted the world's first ever jumbo jet in 1969, a massive aircraft that was as tall as a six-story building and could seat 374 passengers. Washingtonian said a fond farewell to the Boeing 747 when it retired in November 2017. The aircraft can now be visited at Seattle's Museum of Flight. As our journey continues, we find ourselves in the rugged beauty of West Virginia, the birthplace of an invention that revolutionized water travel, the steamboat. This invention was the brainchild of James Rumsey. He invented a steam engine capable of propelling a boat using hydraulic jet propulsion. He first demonstrated the engine on the Potomac River near Shepherdstown on December 3, 1787. This was 20 years before Robert Fulton's boat, though the Fulton design was more practical, and it is Fulton who is honored today as the inventor of the steamboat. As we venture further into our journey of invention, we now find ourselves in the heartland of America's Dairyland, Wisconsin. The first liquefying machine to grace our grocery store shelves hit the scene in 1922, all thanks to inventor Stephen Poplowski who owned Stevens Electric Company. Poplowski originally sold the blender to drugstore soda fountains to aid in the production of another Wisconsin invention, the malted milkshake. That's right folks, the cowboy state's most groundbreaking invention actually has nothing to do with lassos or saddles, but with contributing to the ease of modern-day automotive life. Wyomingite Elmer Lovejoy invented the first garage door opener in 1918. Do you agree with the selection of a significant invention within each state? If you disagree, please comment below. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for